Welcome back into the show, folks. It's Elijah Griffith, and on the phone we have a very special guest. He is the bass singer for the Oak Ridge Boys. Welcome into the show, Richard Sturban. Richard, how you doing, buddy? Well, Eli, thank you for, for, very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you I, you got, and your fine listeners out there. I am doing very well, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Buddy, I am too. It's a pleasure to talk with you. And a little over a year ago, y'all released a new album called 17th Avenue Revival. I love great album names, and that's for sure one of them. I want to know, how did that come about, the 17th Avenue Revival? It's a great story, and I'll be glad to tell you. You know, the, the project was produced by Dave Cobb. You know, if anyone knows anything about the music scene here in Nashville here in the last few years, you know, Dave Cobb is, is, is he's, he's a big time guy. He, he's probably the most in demand producer right now in Nashville. And he agreed to produce this project on the Oak Ridge Boys. And it was his idea to name the project 17th Avenue Revival. The, uh, the project was recorded at probably the most historic recording studio in Nashville, RCA Studio A. They were going to tear that studio down a few years ago and build high-rise condos there or something. But but some investors came in, people in the music business got involved. We were able to save that studio. And so the title of of the studio has to do with the revival of that old historic recording studio. You know, when we recorded there, you could feel the history in that room. You know, Chet Atkins developed, helped develop the original Nashville sound right there many years ago. Uh, Elvis has recorded in that studio. You know, Dolly Parton has recorded there. Hank Williams, you know, the list goes. And now Dave Cobb has moved into Chet Atkins' old office. He works out of there. He does all of Chris Stapleton stuff there, you know, and he produced the Oak Ridge Boys there. And as I said, you could feel the history in that room. And it was a very special project. What Dave Cobb wanted to, to us also to do on this project, he wanted us to uh, tap into that feeling of going to church, going to a revival meeting. And that's what we did on this project. It was like going to church. It, it, it was. It's not an all gospel project. A lot of it is. You know, a lot of it's, you know, the old hymns that we grew up on as kids going to church and the Sunday school. But it, the most important thing is we tapped into that feeling of going to an old time revival meeting. You know, uh, the Oak Ridge Boys know something about that. So does Dave Cobb, you know, because his, his mother was a Pentecostal preacher. So he's been to his share of revival meetings, too. So it was like going to church, recording this project. Uh, and, and as I said, it's not an all gospel project. A lot of it is, though. Uh, But some of today's contemporary country writers are represented, like Shane McAnally and and Brandy Clark have a song on here. They're two of the hottest writers in Nashville right now. Uh, uh, Vince Gill has a song on the album. You know, uh, our good friend Jamie Johnson has a song on the album. So it's a nice mixture, a nice balance of of old-time gospel and some of today's contemporary country. But it turned out so well you know, and, and it, now that it's out, you know, it, it, the music is affecting a lot of people. It's a very meaningful music and it's touching a lot of people's hearts. So when we come to town, we, along with all of our hits, you know, including Elvira and thank God for kids, you know, we will include some of this new music from 17th Avenue Revival because it is very, very you know, uh, important music, you know, and, and, and uh, music that is touching people's lives. Mm-hmm. So y- you and the Oak Ridge Boys, y'all have had more than 30 albums. What makes this different from those? Well, I think working with Dave Cobb is probably the main thing. You know, I- I- I'll never forget, you know, the the, uh, the day we sat down and met with Dave Cobb. We had lunch with him to talk about this project. The, the, his, his very first words out of his mouth were, what I want you guys to do, he said, I want you to think of Elvis. He said, uh, Maybe think of Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, maybe uh, that uh, old rockabilly kind of sound, uh, let, and maybe some old blues. Let's uh, let's uh, uh, maybe think of Ray Charles. You know, what was it about those guys 
you know, that made them so special. He said, it's the same thing that makes you guys special. He said, they all were raised in church. The first singing they ever did was gospel music. So he said, that's what I want to do on this project. He said, I want to capture that feeling of going back to church, going to her. So, so that's what we did on this project. We, it was like going to church, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, and, and then Dave Cobb is a, a genius of taking old, like he's done it with Chris Stapleton, you know, several times now. He takes that old blues and even old bluegrass in a lot of ways, and he marries it with today's modern country. And it turns out so well. In the case of the Oak Ridge Boys, he took old rockabilly and he married it with, with shouting gospel, if I can put it that way. You know, and it's amazing how, how well it turned out. And it, 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 it is indeed a special project. It is a very special project. I listened to it right before I hopped here on the phone with you. And I was actually raised Pentecostal and I've been to my fair share of revivals. And that is exactly what people will get with this new album. But you mentioned Elvis there just a second ago. And I have learned that you actually worked with Elvis. You're absolutely right about that. For about two years prior to joining the Oak Ridge Boys, I sang in a group called J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet. And for about a year and a half of that time, I actually sang with the king of rock and roll. I sang with Elvis. And, you know, back then, Elvis was the biggest star in the world. His tour was the biggest tour in the music business. And to be a part of it was very, very exciting. So so how did you get a part of all of this how, how do you even get a gig with the king of rock and roll well it has to do with elvis's friendship with jd sumner you know before that before i i i got the gig with with, uh, with elvis i got a phone call from jd sumner it was actually jd's nephew jd wanted to leave the road and hire a younger bass singer to take his place and he so they called me and so they offered me the job and and so so i i took the job of singing with jd and the stamps and then elvis had a conflict with the group that he was using the imperials and so we had to find another group and because of his friendship with jd sumner he called jd so i happened to be in the right place at the right time i had to just join the stamps quartet <laughs> when J.D. Sumner got the call from Elvis to, to be the, you know, his backup group. And so, so it worked out, you know, pretty well for me, you know, it really did. But it's kind of interesting, you know, while I was singing, you know, I told you I had some very fond memories of being with Elvis, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I got to know him just a little bit. But while I was singing with Elvis, I got a phone call one day, another phone call, which changed my life, really. It, the, it was William Lee Golden that called me up. And, uh, you know, he's the guy in our group with the mm-hmm. long beard. You know, back then he did not have the long beard. He, he was Mr. G.Q. back then. <laughs> it's hard to imagine that. Up. Yeah, but as he, really, he really was. <laughs> but he called me up and he said the bass singer in the Oak Ridge Boys wanted to leave, wanted to stay home, wanted to get off of the road. And so he, he, said, he said the Oak Ridge Boys wanted to know if I would be interested in the job. Here I was singing with Elvis, apparently on top of the world, in the biggest tour in the music business, but I had to make a decision, you know. Uh, And, you know, I I, I was a big fan of the Oak Ridge Boys, and I really believed in what they were doing, and I really wanted to be a part of the group, and I felt the group had a great deal of potential. So I made that decision. That You know, I called William Lee Golden back the next day, told him I was going to take the job, and... and, uh, And, you know, a lot of people question my decision. How could you leave Elvis and join the Oak Ridge Boys? But, you know, I really believed in my heart I was doing the right thing. And I that was 47 years ago now. And I think time has proven the last 47 years have been pretty special. You know, we've had such a great career. You know, the good Lord has blessed the Oak Ridge Boys. So many great things have happened to us, you know. And so I think... Uh, back then, 47 years ago, I made a pretty good decision. I think it all culminated about three and a half years ago when we were inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. What a special thing for the Oak Ridge Boys. You know, Elvis is in the Country Music Hall of Fame. I never dreamed back when I was singing with Elvis years ago that someday 
I would be in the same Hall of Fame with him, but I am today. You know, uh, and all the Oak Ridge boys, we are in the Hall of Same Hall of Fame with Elvis, with Johnny Cash. You know, you know, with George Jones and Merle Haggard and Dolly Parton. You know, the list goes on and on mm-hmm. and on. So, you know, so it, it's 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 so special to be in the Hall of Fame. It's a tremendous honor. But I'm just saying that to illustrate that that decision I made 47 years ago turned out to be a pretty good decision. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think more people should listen to that voice in their head every once in a while. Of course, everybody's scared to take a leap of faith, especially one that big. I haven't had to take one that big, thank goodness. But, yeah, yeah. That, that was a very good decision in the long run. And you've talked about all these things that you've done with the Oak Ridge Boys, and I wanted to bring this up. Uh, right after... It was announced that y'all would be coming to the Mountain Arts Center. Unfortunately, just a little while after, uh, we lost a very great American, which was a very good friend of y'all's, George H.W. Bush. And I was watching the news that day, and I seen that y'all were attending the funeral, and y'all were singing one of his favorite songs, Amazing Grace. And you've worked with Elvis, you know, you've worked with Johnny Cash, all these great people, but how does a friendship with the President of the United States start? Well, you know, it it, it is a great story. I'll try to make it as as short and as quick as possible. We first met George Bush when he was the Vice President of the United States under President Ronald Reagan. President Reagan invited the Oak Ridge Boys to sing at the Congressional Barbecue on the lawn of the White House. And I remember that day we were doing a sound check there in the afternoon before the show that night. While we were doing the sound check on the stage there, set up on the lawn of the White House, we saw this little entourage of men walking towards the stage. They came up onto the stage. In the middle was this tall, lanky gentleman. He introduced himself to us as Vice President George Bush. He did not have to do that. We recognized him immediately, of course. But he he proceeded to tell us that he was a big fan. And he said, I cannot be at the concert tonight. Would you guys be willing to do a couple of songs for me right now? We said, sure, Mr. Vice President. Tell us, what would you like to hear? And then he started naming album he did not name hits he did not want to hear elvira you know or or y'all come back so he started naming album cuts he did want to hear elvira eventually but 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 so so he he was a b-side guy he was he he, so so that let us know right there and then that he was a big fan of ours because he was very familiar with our music so we proceeded to give him a little mini concert right there that afternoon, right on the stage on the lawn of the White House. That day, we established a friendship with him that lasted for about 35 years. We got to know not just him, but his lovely wife. You know, what a wonderful person, Barbara Bush. Uh, or, you know, they, they were, they were, you know, forget politics. They are two of the nicest people you would ever want to meet in your life. They were very dear people. After they left the White House, we still maintained a friendship with them. And many, on many occasions, we would sing for them. We would go to Kennebunkport, Maine, where they, they would spend their, their summers. And we would, the four of us and our four wives, we would spend two or three days at a time just hanging out with them, with George and Barbara. We gave them personal concerts right there in their living room and of course he would always invite some of the neighbors over (laughs) and it was kind of an informal gathering so to speak but he always wanted to hear his favorite song amazing grace and we always did that for him so not too long before he died before he passed away he asked us if we would sing amazing grace at his funeral and we promised him Yes, Mr. President, you can count on us. We will be there. Regardless of wherever we are, you can count on the fact that we will be there and we will sing at your funeral. You know, death never happens at a convenient time. It does not. You know, we happen to be in the middle of our Christmas tour in December in Spokane, Washington. After our Christmas show, we had to go to the airport, get on a private jet that was donated to us by a very dear friend. Uh, and we flew to Houston, got there just in time to go to the hotel, take a quick shower. We went to the church. 
We visit briefly with George W. Bush and Jeb Bush, President Bush's sons. They both thanked us for doing this for their father. We then sang Amazing Grace for President Bush at his funeral, went back to the airport, flew back to Kennewick, Washington, where we did another Christmas show that night, you know, without any sleep. We did, we, we never missed a show, but the most important thing is we were able to keep our promise to President Bush. He always taught us to do the right thing, and we knew that was the right thing to do. I think the good Lord gave us strength to be able to pull that whole thing off without any sleep. It was a tremendous honor, a very emotional experience, but we were so honored we were able to do it. Yeah, I, and that's a great story about a great man. And just like the new song on y'all's new album, there is a brand new star in heaven tonight. You know, that is such a meaningful song. And and since, you know, here in, here in the last year since we've been performing that song on stage, it has been very meaningful to a lot of people, including us. You know, especially after President Bush died, that was such a meaningful song to the four of us. And just before, it almost got kind of lost in the news because President Bush died. But just a few days before he died, our good friend Roy Clark passed away. Hmm. And the same thing can be said about our good friend Roy. You know, he's a brand new star shining up in heaven tonight. So the song has not only been meaningful to our fans who listen to it, but it's been meaningful to the four of us as we have sung a song. What a great song. One of the best songs you'll ever hear about someone dying and going to heaven. Yeah, I mean, that, that's another thing I was going to say. I seen a uh, comment. Uh, one of y'all made the happiest song about death you'll ever hear. Well, you know, you're right. You know, that song was written by two young fellows. You know, I told you that you know, the project was produced by Dave Cobb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and Dave, what, what a genius he is. But he, he knew the, the two writers of the song are good friends of his. He introduced us to these two young guys. They played this song for us. And we figured, wow, what a great song. And I remember the day we were recording the song. Uh, and uh, we had a little break in the recording session. And, and both of these young guys, I can't think of their names. I'm sorry right now. The two young fellows in their 20s, you know, they, uh, the, Joe Bonzo, our tenor singer, he went up to one of the guys during the break in the recording session. He said, you know, that is the happiest sounding song that I think we have ever heard about somebody dying. And this kid was very serious, in a very deadpan way. He to- said back to Joe, he said, well, you know, that is the point. You know, they were very serious about this song. And, you know, and, 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 and for those of us that believe in Jesus, we believe there is an afterlife. This song is very, very meaningful. It really is. Yeah, it's a great song, and the entire album is great. But, I mean, y'all have put out more than 30 albums. You've been a group for more than 40 years. What's in the future for the Oak Ridge Boys? I'm glad that you are asking that question <laughs> because we, first of all, we do not plan to retire anytime soon. We plan to continue working. We plan to continue touring as long as the good Lord above continues to allow the four Oak Ridge boys to experience good health. We're going to continue doing this because it's what we love doing and we plan to continue recording. We found out here not that long ago that our record label was so happy with this latest project, they wanted us to do another project. They not have only agreed to do another project, but they've agreed to also now do another Christmas album on the Oak Ridge Boys. And Dave Cobb has also agreed to produce both of these projects. So... We are going to have to get in line and wait our turn because Dave Cobb is in such demand. But in June, we've just booked recording days in June to go into the studio to record the the Christmas album first because we have to do it as soon as possible so it will be ready for this coming Christmas. Uh, So so we're going to do a a new Christmas album and then later on in the year, another regular album produced by Dave Cobb. We're so excited about, about the prospects of doing both of these projects. You know, Dave Cobb has taken us down some very special roads musically. We cannot wait to work with him again and see what kind of roads he's going to take us down in the future. But we're excited about the prospects now of doing two more albums with him. 
Well, Richard, that's great to hear. I'm always going to be looking forward to anything that you do. I'm looking forward to the show this Friday night. So what can people expect there? Let me speak for all the Oak Ridge boys. Tell you, we're looking forward to coming your way. We plan to have a great time. We're going to do our best to make it a great night. We're going to do Elvira, of course. You know, you're going to hear me do Giddy Up, Oh, and Papa, Mau Mau. We're going to do Thank God for Kids. You all come back soon. We're going to do a lot of our hits. We're going to do some of this new music from 17th Avenue Revival. Just in general, we're going to have a great night of good country music, good family entertainment. So make your plans. Come on out. Spend some time with the Oak Ridge Boys. Well, Richard, like I said, we are really looking forward to it. It is a sold-out show, so I'm sure it's going to be an incredible night. But, buddy, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to speak with us. It's been my pleasure. Well, thank you, my friend. When you promote the fact we're coming to town, you help us, and we do not take that lightly. We, We appreciate it very much. So thank you, my friend.